Chatear, the Spanish word for chat. Good morning, and welcome to another beautiful day here in Chile. Today we're going to be talking about something that was really difficult for me when I came here to Chile. In fact, Elise and I used to fight over it. No, you do it. No, you do it. I don't want to do it. You do it. You're the man of the house. You should do it. And we're going to dive into that. Maybe you've had the same problem when you moved to another country, but today we're going to delve into talking to people on the phone. And how difficult that can be, especially here in Chile, when you have to call people so much more than texting people. So, well, let's just dive into it. So in the United States, ordering something is a little bit different because all you have to do is go online, click a button, send your money, and you're done. Everything is ready. You have your package, you have whatever you need, all set to go. But here in Chile, you have to make a call. Don't drop the ball, make the call. Typically. Sometimes you can order things online and sometimes you can chat through WhatsApp. But there are a lot of things that, well, you just have to call for. So right now you might be thinking to yourself, well, John, it's really easy to order things and uh, what are you talking about? But for me, coming here to Chile, it was something that was really different and something really, really difficult for me. Because it's one thing to talk to somebody in person and have a conversation in another language. And it's another thing altogether to call somebody on the cell phone and not see any facial expressions as to if they understand or not. And so making a phone call was a little bit more difficult than you may imagine. And making phone calls here, what I'm talking about is, well, we ordered a lot of sushi, that was our fault, but you have to order gas. That's something that, uh, well, you just have to do. And then to check up on things. When you move to Chile, you have to fill your house with stuff. Obviously, you need a, a kitchen, you need a refrigerator, you need an oven, you need all those things that go inside of it. And so sometimes those orders, they don't come right away. And they don't come when they're expected to come. So you have to make a call and ask them what's going on. And, well, we stumbled through it. But it was, uh, it was interesting and it wasn't a whole lot of fun. I'm not kidding when I say that Elise and I would fight over who was going to call because we were so nervous to call. <sighs> Those were the days. Okay, bye mom, talk to you later. But it's not just the ordering things. It's the ending to every conversation with almost anyone, even the gas guy or the taxi driver. No, maybe not them, but people that you know here after a while, you have, to, you have to end the conversation in a certain way, with un besito, a kiss, or un abrazo, a hug. It's so lovey-dovey that in the United States, typically, literally, I just ended the conversation with my mom with, okay, yep, talk to you later. Sometimes you say I love you, but oftentimes, at least in my family, you say, okay, we'll see you later, we'll talk to you later, bye. That's it. It's very bland in the United States, in English in general, I think, because I've never heard anyone ever in my life in English say, okay, a big hug, or okay, a kiss. Never. But here, it would be weird to end a conversation with somebody that we know really well without saying un besito or un abrazo grande, mucho cariño, something like that. It's really beautiful, but it's really strange. And you have to understand it before ending a conversation here in Chile. 
Now I personally didn't understand this whole concept for a while after I arrived, maybe, maybe six months to a year, because, well, our conversations weren't that deep. And maybe they said it to us, but I have no idea because I didn't really understand very well, to be honest with you. But uh, after a while, you understand that you have to end a conversation with something sweet, something nice, and even for birthdays. On Facebook, it's somebody's birthday. In the United States, it's kind of foamy because you just say, happy birthday, that's it. Not much of a kind message, just happy birthday. Here, you have like a paragraph and you describe where you met, your uh, best experience together, all these awesome things, but uh, typically, that's not the case in the States. Or maybe in English, I don't know. But in the States for sure, you just say, happy birthday. Oh, crazy. But let's talk about a toast. So a toast in Chile is kind of like ending a phone conversation, but on steroids. Because you have to have just the perfect words, you have to say just the right thing, and you have to make it last for a few sentences, which is the hard part for me personally. But typically, in the United States, a toast, well, it doesn't happen very often. It might happen for a major event, like a Christmas event where you have all of your family together, or Thanksgiving event where you have everybody together, something like that. However, here in Chile, I've noticed that typically when you have a good bottle of wine or some beer and your friends around, you have to have some sort of a toast because you're celebrating being together and having a good time together. So why not? It makes perfect sense to me now, but I oftentimes am looked at to do a toast because we have people over at our house a lot and we have some beer and some wine and things like that and I, I don't know what to say. Typically I'm halfway done with my beer and people are just looking at me like, what happened to the toast? But now I've got one in mind, I have an idea of what to say, but it took me some time to figure that out and uh, it took me some time to figure out that people were looking at me after I was done with my beer and they were expecting a toast. Hola, necesito ordenar gas. Cuánto, 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 cuánto. Uh, how many times have I had that happen to me? Where you just, uh, you're not expecting that response. How much gas? I thought everyone got the same amount of gas. <sighs> that was a real struggle for me when I came here. And it's just figuring those things out, figuring out what people might respond with that helps you then prepare yourself and build the confidence to order something. And it's not just ordering gas that you need maybe every month in your house, it's ordering taxis, it's like I said, whenever you order something at the store, then sometimes it doesn't happen, you have to call back and, oh, it's just a mess. Well, it was just a mess for me. Probably not for you guys, but maybe you can understand the difficult time that, that I had. But you tell me, am I totally off my rocker in thinking like this? Or is it true that typically the gringos have uh, not so beautiful language? And typically in South America, maybe in general, but especially here in Chile, the language is much more beautiful. It's much more poetic. And maybe that dates back into history from the famous poets that came out of Chile. I don't know. But I feel like I'm always working on how to make my language more beautiful. And it gets really tricky when I'm writing happy birthday to friends in the States. And I want to say something beautiful now, but uh, it just sounds weird in English because, I don't know, it's just not how I talk in English. It's weird. But uh, maybe you've had a similar experience. Maybe you've gone to the United States and, and you've said uh, a kiss as you leave, or you've said a big hug as you leave. And uh, people look at you kind of funny. But also, maybe you've had the experience of being super nervous to call somebody in another language. And you get nervous and sometimes you don't even call or sometimes you call and then you hang up because you just didn't know what to say or you didn't know what they were saying. I've been there, I completely understand. These things are just flopping all over the place. But I wanted to focus today on that because it's an experience that I've had in the past that I don't hope to replicate. 
Maybe I'll move to another country in the future. I hope not. I love Chile, but if I ever do, I'm moving to another Spanish-speaking country so I don't have to deal with those phone conversations again. And now I have the words that, well, they just come to me, which is great. It's great. It's great. But anyways, I'm kind of disappointed today because I was supposed to be going to Argentina. I was supposed to be going to a Festival de Chivo, which would have been so much fun and I was hoping to bring you guys with, but unfortunately the plans fell through, but for better reasons that I can't quite tell you guys yet, but well, there was somebody in the municipality who said we love your videos and we and Linares is all behind you. So I have another meeting today with them and I am so excited and hopeful that the meeting will go well and that I can tell you guys what I've been up to the last couple of months. And uh, well, the meetings are good. They're real good. So. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video for today. If you did, please give it a big old thumbs up. Check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. All of the links are right below, including a comment section. Make sure that, well, if you have any experiences like mine, make sure that you write them below. I'm interested and it'll help me to feel a little bit better about making this episode because, well, I feel kind of bad that I didn't have the words to say to get gas, like something so simple. But maybe you guys have been there as well. If you have, leave in the comments below. And we'll see you guys next time for another adventure. But for now, ciao, let's go.